Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now I did say we'd be looking at Atari machines and true to my word we're going to be looking at some Atari machines. Now anyone who knows me will know that I'm a pretty much a Commodore guy but uh, I do have a respect for Atari and all the other competitors so I felt it was time we had a little look at some Atari machines. Now my own personal uh, collection if you like of Atari machines is pretty basic but I saw this come up on eBay a few weeks ago, untested, uh, unloved, and clearly a little bit grotty. I decided to give it a go and, um, you know, see if it worked. Fortunately, it almost kind of does work, which surprised me a great deal. But I bought a, um, it came with no cables, came with nothing. So I bought a USB uh, power adapter for it. The Commodore 64 SCART lead or RGB lead or composite lead will fit, so that's good. So I had everything I needed to power the machine. When I first powered on the machine, it booted into memo pad, and the first thing I noticed was probably half the keyboard doesn't work, with the odd exception. QA don't work, Z does, and all that sort of thing. The usual fare for a membrane keyboard. So the first thing I ordered was a brand new membrane which I have to fit and I will do in another video very shortly. Now this costs about £24 and it came from, let me have a little look, it came from eBay, it did actually come from Germany and it was not £24 but €25. Euros. So I can thoroughly recommend it, it looks very good quality and um, there's no bits missing like there are on mine. My machine has had some brown liquid spilt on it in its life and unfortunately some of the membrane uh, contacts have started to corrode away and the silvers broke through and all the rest of it. The tracks are disappearing basically. So it was time to buy a new membrane. So that's that sorted. Um, or it will be when I fit it. So what I did first off was clean the machine. Even though it's a horrible sort of brown colour now I'll, I'll eventually get it back to a white state but as you can see it's damaged so if anyone's got an Atari 65 XE keyboard top or case top I'd be very interested in that as the bottom is good more or less but the top is damaged now this is a 130 XE this is from 1985 and it's one of the first machines that came out after Dra Jack Trammell bought Atari Inc, I think it was, and it became Atari Corporation. Um, he revised the line and started a lot of cost cutting, which Jack was very good at, some would say. But back to this machine, this is a 130XE. It was released in 1985 and discontinued not long after, I think, um, when Atari went to focus on the ST range, as the 8-bit market was pretty poor by the mid 80s, for new machines anyway. The, the early 80s, the uh, Atari 800 XL, the Commodore 64s and the Sinclair Spectrum and all that sort of thing, sold in great numbers. I mean, the Commodore 64 sold in whatever it was, 30 million units, which left Atari in a difficult position because they had the very expensive 800 machines, then they cost cut, developed the 800 XL, and then Jack came along, bought the company uh, for practically nothing and he developed the, or they developed, the XE machines and a few other strange combinations of machines. But eventually the 65, which was a 64K machine, and the 130, which isn't 130K, or it is, depending on how you look at it, but it's actually 128K. But in realistic terms, it's something like 131K, I think. But anyway, we'll not go there. So looking on the inside, I've taken the screws out. It does bolt together. Uh, can I lift this off without destroying things? Okay, now as you can see, that's the back of the keyboard membrane. Well, you can't see it, but take my word for it. So you take all these screws out, you put the new membrane in, and bolt it together. Now I've cleaned this, I've taken it apart, not that you can tell, but it was full of brown liquid. The keys were sticking, and it was quite disgusting. But fortunately, none of that brown liquid which I guess is Coca-Cola, made it to the motherboard. So the motherboard, from what I can see, is quite clean and quite nice. So I'll be uh, taking this apart because we have another problem. 
And the next problem is of course the old favourite of the Toria 130, it has a RAM problem. Now there are two banks of RAM down here that you can't see and what happens is that one, two or more of the uh, RAM chips will go bad and when you turn the computer on it will go straight to a RAM test. Normally it should go to the uh, notepad which is a blue screen and you can type and do whatever you like. And one of the things that Atari talked about doing with the XE was they were going to connect an expansion bus or an expansion box, whatever you want to call it, onto the back of the XEs. Then you could slot cards in there and you could expand the system that way. I don't know what they were planning on releasing because the box was never released and no products were obviously ever released for it. So, a complete waste of time. But it would have been a good idea, I think, if they'd done that. So I often wondered why the, the Commodore 64, which is supposed to be the Apple II killer, was never going to be an Apple II killer without expansion. But anyway, that's a different story. So let's pretend that the Atari 800, or rather the Atari XE, basically the same machine, um, is fully working and functioning. How do you play games on it? Well, you either have a set port plugged into the back, or a disk drive, or if you're very lucky, you can have one of these things. Now this is an SD card reader, and it's a floppy disk drive and a cassette emulator for the Atari XE range. And this plugs into the port at the back and gives you the option to load images onto an SD card and load them straight into memory as though they are a real disc or a real cassette. It's very good and I'll show this working in another video shortly, but not at the moment. So what's the plans with this machine? Well, I've obviously got to get it working before I can show it doing anything. Like I say, this is a 1985 machine. Uh, I believe Atari discontinued all of their 8-bit range by the very, very early 1990s, something like 92, whereas Commodore carried on until 94 when they went bust. But anyway, so the RAM's got to be changed inside this machine. I have the sockets. And I've ordered RAM, but RAM hasn't come yet, so I can't do that. So that's going to be about it for this video. Not very exciting, I'm afraid, but I just wanted to show you the Atari that we're going to be working on and we're going to be spending some time with over the next few weeks. The next video I, I do will be replacing the keyboard membrane, and the one after that will be desoldering and adding new RAM. It may be a case of piggybacking RAM to try and get some of it working or trying to find out which ones are bad, it could be interesting. But I could potentially remove all the RAM and um, swap it about until I get one bank working. So that's it, that's my Atari 130XE. Quite a nice looking machine, very reminiscent of the Atari ST, which was shown, I think, at the Winter CES at the same time as this machine. But this one, or the XE, and especially the XL range are the machines that people will remember. Less so the XE, more XL of course. But anyway, so this is the machine we're going to be working on and in the next video we'll be doing the membrane and in the video after that we'll probably be replacing the RAM. So stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for now. Bye.